An interesting question to ask when thinking about negotiation is, is negotiation the best method? Now, actually, negotiation should only be used if there isn't already a better solution available. So before we really get into the techniques of negotiation, we should think about what other options might be available. This is often called the BATNA, B-A-T-N-A. This is um, used by William Urey um, in the book Getting to Yes, part of the Harvard Negotiation Project. That's actually a great book to read. BATNA says, what is your best alternative to a negotiated agreement? So if you can't get to a negotiated agreement, what are the other options and what is the best option that you have available? The point is that the more options you have, the more freedom you have. If you don't have to negotiate, you have a lot more power and a lot more freedom in the negotiation. So it's important at the beginning or before a negotiation to ask yourself what are the solutions that are available. If I can't get to a satisfactory negotiated agreement, what are my other options? Let's think about this as an example. Imagine that you were going for a job and you were negotiating an employment contract. In this situation, you would ask yourself the question, if I can't get a satisfactory agreement with the potential employer, what is my best alternative to that negotiated agreement? It could be that you are able to stay in the job that you're in. It could be that you can take up another job. It could be that you could go self-employed. It could be that you have a long holiday and use your long service link. What are the other options that are available that give you the freedom to walk away if you can't get a negotiated agreement that is suitable to you? Now, the more freedom, the more ideas you have, the more choices you have, the more power you have in that negotiation. Now, one of the things to do is to think about not only what other options that you have, what are the other options that the person you're negotiating or the organisation you're negotiating has? What is their backner? What is their best alternative to a negotiate agreement? Perhaps in this situation, they could employ somebody else. They could choose not to employ anybody at all. They could uh, choose to contract somebody. There are other options that they have and they need to think about well, how good are those options based on the needs that they have. Now, another part of this is thinking about the reservation price. That is, what is, what is the lowest price that you're willing to accept, for example, in an employment situation? Or if you're going to buy a car, for example, what is the highest reservation price that you are willing to pay? What is the lowest that they are willing to come? And this, this talks about what is called the ZOPA, Z-O-P-A, the Zone of Possible Agreement. When coming to a negotiation, unless there is a zone where both parties will be satisfied, where both parties in the negotiated agreement have a better option than their best alternative, there is no negotiation to create. So before we get into negotiation, we need to be thinking about what other alternatives do we have? What other alternatives do they have? Where is the zone of possible agreement? Now, one of the challenges when seeking to think about this is that um, the research shows, for example, if you were given information about a company, for example, you were given a balance sheet, you were given the profit and loss, you were given all the key information about them. Now, if we took a couple of groups, we gave the exactly the same information to two groups, and one of them we said, you are going to sell this company based on this information you have, 
what would be the selling price. And to the other one, other group, exactly the same information, but you are going to be the buyer. What are you willing to pay? Now, people, depending on the perspective they come from, will come to different understandings. The ones who are selling will think the company is worth more. The ones who are buying will think the company is worth less. Exactly the same information, and yet they come on many, many studies to different opinions. Now, if you ask a group just to look at it from neither a buyer or a seller perspective, they will actually come in the middle. So when you are thinking about what your perspective is or what their perspective is, you need to try to get out of your viewpoint into their viewpoint to try to create this understanding of what is the zone of potential agreement. If I'm selling my, for example, I sold my motorbike a couple of years ago, when I'm going to sell it, when I, I own it, I probably put a higher price on it. Somebody's buying it, they're probably going to put a lower price on it. So I need to think about what are the alternatives. Am I willing to come to a, a what's my lowest price I'm willing to go to? If I'm going for a job, what's the lowest amount that I'm willing to get accept paid? What are the terms of agreements that is the least that I'm willing to accept? What is my best alternative if I can't get to that? And we're going to be talking about that when we go through the steps of the negotiation. We're going to come back to the BATNA and the zone of possible agreements and the reservation prices. That's all something we're going to deal with as we go through the steps. But it's really important that before you even begin to negotiate, you ask yourself the question, is there another option to negotiating? Do I have a better solution? Do I need to negotiate to get the solution that I'm looking for?